Sa panahon ngayon, halos lahat na yata pwedeng pagkakitaan. Pwede kang mag-work sa office, mag-work from home, or work from anywhere pa nga. Pero alam niyo ba na you can also work while you're sleeping? Yung pagising mo sa umaga, makikita mo na lang, oh, lumago na pala ang pera ko. Ang sarap nun, di ba? Stay tuned and find out how to make your money work for you. Time to think rich. Be inspired by personal stories of success. Learn to invest without fear and greed. Ride the latest business trends. Dream big. Dare to be the Philippines' next billionaire. I'm Chida Barachina. Follow me. Let's follow the money. Only here on Billionaire Digital. Good afternoon, Rich Takers! How are you na? Lumalamig na ba ang simoy ng hangin dyan sa inyo? Comment yun naman kung saan kayo ngayon nanonood. I know there are OFWs out there na baka mamaya nasa Australia pa summer na dyan. And others naman will start na yung winter season. At tayo dito sa Pilipinas also, lumalamig na rin ang hangin. The truth is, nagkakaroon na ng ibang meaning ang salitang multitasking these days. Kung dati multitasking is doing different task for a job at the same time, ngayon multitasking is doing different jobs for a day. Hashtag multiple income streams. Hashtag goals. Excited na ba kayo? Our big time guest for today is a chartered financial analyst, third level, and a master of science in global finance. He is one of the most respected equity analysts in the country and the president and CEO of Calum Trading Institute. Find out ano nga ba ang kailuman matututo ng panibagong ascenso tips at payaman mindset from another successful icon. This is Big Time, Big as in Business Inspiring Guest. How are you, Edmond? Thank you for you know, uh, giving a guest to this interview here at Follow the Money. Hi, China. Nagulat lang ako sa introduction eh. <laughs> Bye, hindi ko ba sanay na serious? We go all the way back nito ni Edmond, kaya medyo natutuwa ako that he's our guest for today. And uh, minsan lang yan mag-seryoso. At least masabi na lang. <laughs> so Edmond, can you tell us, maraming nakakakilala ng dad mo, but I want you to introduce to our uh, audience today, what is Kalum Trading Institute? Well, I, I think a lot of people pretty much know us more from the stock brokerage end, right? Obviously, with the success of CEO Financial. Um, how we really came about was really about education and financial advocacy. And I think that's always been key towards our success, um, even with regards to CEO. So what we wanted to take that a lot um, one step further. Um, so that's the reason why back in 2013, you know, we really wanted to come up with an educational institute. Um, I didn't think I had the capability and the track record to be able to build a school already 10 years ago. Um, so what happened was I, you know, went to my alma mater, went to Ateneo, um, and I tried to apply it to teach first before we thought about bringing it to the bigger stage. Um, unfortunately, Ateneo did not take me, they did not accept me. Um, so it's really unfortunate because if it wasn't for that experience, you know, I wouldn't go on to the other side, which was TAF, and apply there to teach. Uh, they also didn't accept me. So what happened was I didn't have the ability to teach. So that's how Caleb was born uh, 10 years ago and back in 2013. So fortunately, I mean, you know, we go through these experiences of ups and downs. Uh, and you know, one of the biggest question marks back when we were starting Caleb in 2013 was people, were people really going to believe us? I mean, you're a young kid on the street. You just had a few years under your belt um, as an equity analyst, and you didn't know if people were really going to attend. Fortunately, people did. And I think that really um, gave us that watch pad towards where we are today. Fast forward 10 years later, um, markets have been different, but I think our reputation towards financial education and financial literacy, especially for higher levels of education, 
is still a well-known in this industry. So I think I, I'm still very blessed for that over the last 10 years. Gina. That's so inspiring to hear, Edmund. You know what? Back in the day when I was still with you guys and in, in, in COL, I remember your dad always telling me about he want he wants to have an educational avenue really for traders and uh you you started it and i i've witnessed how it grew and now my audience natin it's uh i think a lot of uh the people here most or probably most of them have not been exposed to the stock market industry and it, it's really refreshing for them to find out that there is an institute that they can you know enroll uh when it comes to learning um trading formally and now you started as an equity analyst and then from that onset medyo my ano pa yan employee mindset diba uh, can you share a pivotal moment or challenge in your journey as a ceo and how you overcame it when it comes to like transitioning from being an employee to being the you know the boss <laughs> great question the one charge. <laughs> you know, that was really a you know, um, hurdle when we were starting, I really didn't want to work first for the family. And the reason why I really want to work outside and try to grow your skills and try to see where you can contribute over the organization. Um, so when I started back in 2009, 2010, uh, as an equity analyst, um, it really just gave you one perspective with regards to, for example, especially the research department where April was my boss, um, back in 2010, 2011. Um, but I think what was pivotal was we had a senior guy. Um, I, I'm sure you know this person. I won't name his name anymore. Um, <laughs> back in 2012, close to early 2013, right? And he said something very profound to me. Uh, you know, building business is very difficult, right? And what your father was able to achieve building this organization from zero to 100 is remarkable, right? And I know that you as an individual and as a son of the owner, is that you're always trying to look for your position, um, see how you can grow something on your own, right? I think it's, it's it's normal for any second generation to try to create something on your own. But I think what was key for what he was talking about was like, you know, what's harder from building a business from zero to 100 is actually transforming it from 100 into 1,000. And I think that those words really stuck with me maybe the last 10 years, because instead of trying to create your own legacy and your own path, what you're really trying to do is really try to expound on what's already there and try to make it even bigger. Uh, I mean, that's true. I think it's a very tall task for any next generation kid um, trying to think about where the company is going to be headed, not just in the next 10, 20 years, but the next 50 years while you're still um, hopefully become still a part of the succession of this company, right? Um, and I think that's the reason why people can say that, you know, Caleb is something new, something, you know, fresh. But, you know, how we looked at Kingdom was that it's just really an extension of what we were known for, which is financial in terms of, uh, which is financial education and financial policy. Um, till today, I think that's still our mandate and still our goal and our vision with regards to both COL, KLOM, CTS, and any other uh, sister company that's going to be under that umbrella. That's, um, that's Actually, what when you were saying about the second generation discipline, uh, our previous guests was actually where they were self-made and they start from zero to one hundred, as you were saying. And it's nice to know and it's nice to share with the audience today what is the discipline of the second generation, because you know you have this standard that you need to keep, and also at the same time you want to explore and grow on your own. Uh, it was a, a discipline probably that you've seen uh, when you're growing up. And, you know, and, and in terms of like your business and how you manage it, do you also talk or um, um, ask, seek advice from, of course, your dad and uh, the, you know, people like close to you in the business? Huh. I think that's an understatement. I think uh, I talk to him almost every day trying to figure out, <laughs> pick his brain about the market. But, you know, I think maybe coming from a second generation that, we have a privilege that maybe the first generation that does not have. And that is our ability to make mistakes. Um, yes, I mean, I, the first gen always talks about now you can make mistakes, right? But making a mistake for them was, for me, 
small. I mean, there's really nothing to lose because you didn't have anything there, right? For us, making mistakes is more costly. Obviously, coming from Shempre, the bar, me pera whatever, the bar. So Shempre making a mistake is much more costly for the second generation. But I think what was fortunate, maybe for all three siblings and all of us, was that you know our parents allowed us to make that mistake, right? Um, I don't think. Maybe not everybody, but I think that's key for second generation. Is because you don't really don't know what's right, what's wrong. I mean, you're starting exploring about it. what's corporate life, how structure is. You know, sometimes you have your own brain that's not in sync with what the chairman thinks or what your first generation or father thinks, which is normal, right? And then, but the thing is, you know, chairman never really stopped us. I think that's what we're very, very fortunate for. Okay, okay, okay. Ano ba na ako na magdecision? Kaya if you make a mistake, na ba ako tawo na naman si Chairman? Sabi niya buti ng ako. I think I think that's something that we were very fortunate as a family to be brought on, not just on the discipline of um, you know picking the right vision, the right company, but it's just allowing us to make all those mistakes as early as we can, so that you don't make that mistake at later. I mean, at this stage of our life, we're, we're all 30 plus, 40 plus already. You were talking about mindset and how you. So, so sometimes when you do you ever clash with your dad when it comes to you know idea that he didn't like approve because you're saying he's like lenient to it on you committing mistakes. Was there any any time that you had like he did he doesn't like he's not for it so he's like no don't do that. Yeah, he's like that all the time. I think uh, <laughs> we always have opposite views. Hi, Sir Edward. <laughs> I mean, he'll always have opposite views. I think that's fine. But you know, at the end of the day, he still gives you that call. So, okay, this is my opinion. You're gonna make decision, which is fair, right? I mean, he just has to give his opinion, and I think that's you know part of being in any business is that you have to have an open mind, right? Uh, so you try to look at both. Lens of the equation, both sides of the equation, both the good and the bad, and the drawback of what you're going to be doing, right? And at the end of the day, um, he gave us that power and flexibility. Okay, now you've heard both sides. It's not a decision. Try to figure out what's going to be best for the firm, which has been turned out to be, I mean, fortunately for us, as an effective way for growing the organization as well, right? I mean, it's never going to be, you know, there's many ways to solve any problem, right? Uh, And sometimes it's not about being right or wrong. Sometimes you're just trying to do the best that you can in your ability to trust your decision making, so that whether it comes out wrong or you know right, it's just sticking to the process. And I think that's still key for any organization to grow um, exponentially. So when we want to talk about mindset, uh, what mindset or qualities do you believe that are crucial for success? In this kind of business, where it's fast-paced and ever-changing world of online stock trading, you know, I think that's one of the uh, the funny part is, I think that's one of the different mindsets that was very different from how the first generation versus our generation grew. Right, um, first generation is mostly about who you know, relationship, hard work, perseverance. Right, and I think all those are still matter up until today. Um, I think the biggest difference for this generation is that now you really have to have a level of skill, meaning you need to have a skill set that is intangible. For whether you're good at coding, you're good at numbers, you're good at finance, uh, you're good at valuation, you're good at engineering, um, and I think every succeeding businessman and even second generation really, really needs to find that skill set. Um, fortunately for us, I mean, we have. I mean, I have that skill set with regards to finance and equity analysis that I continue to grow and continue to hold in terms of um, how the business is going to be looked at. Um, and I think that mindset of trying to find where you're going to be your niche in that market and that specialization is incredibly key uh, for any businessman to have any sort of some form of, form of success. In the Uh, when we talk about finance, we always have uh, risk as a topic, right? So, how do you approach risk management and decision making, especially in an industry known for its, you know, inherent uncertainties and volatility? Definitely, I you know I think you're when you're making mistakes, you don't want to 
spend as much. I think that's what's key, right? <laughs> um, and this is maybe not just a our trade, but it's any business trade, especially the ones that are starting. Shepherd, kulang ano po na nito ba? So always yeah. try to look at yung punan mo kulang, di ba? So you're trying to make a mistake or you're trying to do something in the event that it won't cause the firm an arm and a leg, right? You know how some businesses today go all in, all out or nothing, right? Which is normal. I mean, for a lot of businesses, because especially kung, if you have nothing to lose, then chamber all in that that game, ba? Uh, in our end, we were never taught that mindset. Right? So if you're gonna do something and cost something towards the firm, it's never anything that's gonna cost it an arm and a leg. So that whatever happens, it's still gonna be running functionally uh, from a day-to-day -day basis, despite all the mistakes that you were able to do from a day-to-day, -day, right? Um, maybe fortunately, I'm in the trading field. That's the reason why we're always built that way. So like in our industry, we always have a term called value at risk or VAR. So meaning how we look at it that, okay, if we're going to do some event or do some business expansion, it's got to be less than 1% of the total resources of the entire corporation. So that's how we really look at the firm. You know, I've known Edmund since like 2011, I think. And looking back, I've seen you mature. And what advice yeah. would you give? No, mature, like mentally mature. Tignan you naman si Edmund, mukha siyang, ano, Kate. Drama art, no. artista. <laughs> well, looking back, seriously, so tungo talo ko Edmond. Looking back, what would you say to your younger self when you were starting your career in the financial industry? For me, it's really starting early. Um, I know a lot of people. You know, when you're young, you're trying to figure out life in general, right? Figure out where you're going to be positioning. What are you going to do for the rest of your life? And I think that's very important, right? Um, and for me, if I was very fortunate because at a very, very early stage, you know, I never wanted to enter the finance field or mainly I didn't want to enter the family business. When I came in first as an equity analyst, I just fell in love with the stock market. Meaning I saw what was possible. I saw what was not possible. You know, one of the first stocks that <clears throat> I was watching over was BlackBerry. And I don't think a lot of people know this story um, because before all the smartphone craze, the one thing that was very popular back in the day was BlackBerry. Right? So when you're going yeah. to a club and you're asking for girls' numbers, you don't ask for what's your BBN. Right? You so, you know. Mukhang dami mo tinanong, ha? Eh. <laughs> the point being here is that you know that yeah. BlackBerry, that stock was that it was under my radar, right? And we had a great research over um, BlackBerry or RIM at that time, right? We had a target price of $190 per share. It was trading at $160. I remember that clearly. But five years later, when Apple Android came into the picture, BlackBerry went from $160 to one less than five dollars per share yeah really right and you know that story back in 2010 still is attached to how i look at it because i always say one mistake can wipe you out of the game right but i also saw you know at those early stages some companies that were able to turn out to be 10 20 baggers and for us i think that was the exciting part for the guards of the stock market and that's the reason why from an early stage, I always tell people, find a skill set that you will fall in love as early as you can. Because, you know, the earlier that you get involved and fall in love with it, the 10,000 hours is going to be incredibly short and it will just continue to grow from there. So, Edmund, would you say that hindi ka directly agad agad na in love sa, sa, sa stock market business? It was just, you know, it was developed over time. Well, I fell in love, but it's also developed over time. I mean, all the pain that you go through in the stock market, I mean, you know, 2013, I always say that's the peak of the stock market because the PSEI was sitting at 7,400. Till today, I mean, the PSE is 6,200. <laughs> I mean, we're still down from the peak in 2014, uh, 2013, May. Um, but, you know, we're still here. And the reason yeah. why is because I still get excited about trying to look for ideas, stocks, trying to find out what the future is going to hold. 
Um, and we've seen so many what we call mega trends transitions that have happened over the past 10 years. People see Tesla as a mega corporation. I remember seeing Tesla when it was trading at $40 per share before going up to its highest um, $2,500 free stock trade. So, you know, it's just, I think that's the nice thing about being in the equity market is that there are just so many things moving constantly every single day. So there's just so many exciting stories that made me get me excited. Um, that's the reason why we're still in the stock market industry till today. Ganun naman daw kapag love mo talaga, di ba? Even if it's not going too well, nakikita mo pa rin yung reason to be excited. Ay, hindi pa kumikita, di ba? Just get you excited. Yes, of course. <laughs> But kidding aside, you know, I remember that so well, BlackBerry and also Nokia. Uh, it hit me so hard that I I said to myself that innovation and you know, continuous innovation and change really is important in building a business. And, you know, it's, it's something that is, it's like your bloodline that if you don't catch up to it, no matter how big is the gap of your business trying to, you know, achieve, Nakita, may nag overtake lang pwede kang mawala sa mapa and um, yeah that is really good that you mentioned that so in this business uh, how do you prioritize your customer experience and satisfaction knowing that it's an institute um, from, well from the Kalum side I think what we're trying to do is really try to give the best experience for all students as we can um, you know I don't like to shortchange individuals I think that's also the reason why we had such a difficult transition coming from the pandemic. It's because a lot of things, instead of going face to face, was done through Zoom and online learning, which I did not want to do until today, especially with regards to the team. And the reason why is because I feel like one of the biggest experiences with regards to education is also the people that they're going to be hanging out with, your peers, your teachers. And I felt that online education wouldn't give that same experience. Um, and so it's really took us a while for us to do some level of transitioning. Um, it's only until last year where we started to go back face to face. But even then, you know, even the market in terms of education has changed with that regard. But nonetheless, I think we're still excited about the industry and the business. You know, education is still going to be incredibly key for the young generation. Um, we think financial literacy and advanced financial literacy, what we teach, is still going to be a lifetime skill that anyone needs to learn, right? I mean, at the end of the day, who knows what to, who knows what to, what's best for your money than yourself? <laughs> yeah. So did the did the, edu- did the students' dynamic change because you know the age right now of like the prime? Um, I was talking to Paula about this in episode two. It's already at 23 years old to 25 years old, which is ibang generation nato. It's not millennial anymore. So, have you seen the change in the dynamics of the students now that it's in a much younger generation compared to last five, ten years ago? Definitely. And I think the reason why it's because the younger generation is, despite all the criticisms that the Gen Z have, right? I mean, they like to jump jobs and everything. One thing that I always give them credit for is that they are a very intelligent generation. And I really have, I mean, I really blame the internet for that part of their intelligence, right? And that's the reason why, you yeah. know, a lot of kids, especially the ones that are coming in to our sister companies, both in CPS and CUL, you know, the younger generation are actually very, very capable and intelligent. And I think that's a good part because their ability to grasp situations and try to understand situations is very, very high. Um, I think YouTube, meaning if they need to learn anything, you have YouTube for that, right? So, in terms of education, in terms of Kalo, um, Shemper, the younger generation, instead of paying for that, would rather just go to YouTube and learn it for free. Which is fair. YouTube right? University, yeah. I also do that. Yeah, and for me, which is fine, right? As long as you learn. And, you know, you know, at the end of the day, we're all here trying to build the markets together. So in any way, in any form that we can have some impact with regards to education, whether free or paid, we don't really care. Basta may impact lang yan sa tao. That's the most important for us because people at the end they will remember the message, that effort that you did. I agree. I, I agree. I always like um, when I was starting in the industry of stock market. I always hear that from your dad, and it's really have been consistent over the years. And uh, talking about like 
what you have said, how do you foster culture of adaptability within your team naman? Ensuring that all of you can navigate challenges and, you know, capitalize on new opportunities. Well, surprisingly, in the organization, well, I can speak for CTS because I'm the mm -hmm. CFO for CTS Global from a bigger standpoint. Um, I think the fortunate part, again, is not just limiting people to just one area, meaning ito lang gagawin mo, and nandito ka lang, right? And then you promote, and then, okay, now this is now your responsibility. I don't think that has always been the case for CTS and maybe also for CEO, CEO Financial. Um, I think it's really fostering, you know, if you can do it, if you want to handle more responsibility, by all means, handle it. But I mean, I think we've always given people that opportunity to, you know, to grow. Right? Okay, if this is not something that's easy for you to do and you think you can handle more responsibility, by all means, go lang. And we like it. I mean, you're always trying to push yourself for more. I, won't, I mean, I won't argue with you, right? Um, and I think together with that is we don't try to micromanage as much as we can. I think it's similar to how we let also people make mistakes. Um, and the reason why is because if we micromanage every single bit, then ako na lang ng trabaho mo, hindi na kailangan. <laughs> So, I think that's also the portrait part. We let people, you know, explore. You, you want to grow. You think you can do more responsibility. By all means, again, go up. And when all of us, when all of us here in this organization have that mindset, it also becomes very contagious. So I think that's, you know, for any organization, um, especially the ones that are still small, tendency is to micromanage and to do everything by yourself, right? But that means, you know, and I give credit to Chairman this because Chairman for me is our HR. Because his hiring and the way he speaks is for me, by not, uh, nobody comes close to Chairman in that regard. So I really call Chairman our head of HR because he gives people inspiration, gives people, see, I man, see, laban, ikaw na bahala, di ba? And, he he know, really is a motivator, talaga. Oh, so, 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 so given the benefit of the doubt, I think that's also key for any company culture. You need somebody like that, right? Who can give people faith, belief that you can do it or you want more responsibility. And very few people in my in, in my opinion have that capability. That's so inspiring. And also, you know, I relieved ko yung moments that I was there and, you know, working with you guys. And ngayon naman, let's jump up to uh fast talk. So Edmond, little uh, top of mind, no right or wrong answer. Ready? Okay, I don't think I'm ready, but let's go. <laughs> okay, division of expenses or multiplication of income? The first one. What's the first one again? Division of expenses. Division of expenses. Okay. In one word, describe Caleb Trading Institute. Advocacy. Forex or crypto? Neither. <laughs> ano ang luho ng isang Edmund Lee? Luho. I, I play ball. <laughs> okay. Oh, I didn't know that. What's your greatest fear? Heights. Yes. Oh, okay. So, hindi ka nagka-climb. Ano ang mas nakakatakot? Kumapit sa patalim o masilaw sa salapi? Mas nakakatakot? Yes. Masilaw sa salamin. Sa salapi? Sa salamin? Sa salapi? <laughs> Sorry. What's your, what's your biggest purchase so far? Biggest purchase so far? Uh, land? House? House. What are you willing to give up for success? Mm -hmm. Success? Uh, nothing, actually. For me, I, I, I don't. It depends on how you look at success. I think for us, at the end of the day, you know, you're just trying to give back. So, I mean, if that's the case, then 100% will give everything. What's your ultimate goal? I, uh, you know, teach, educate, hopefully 
out of a million people that you teach, one person comes back to you and thanks you, hey, you made a big change in our life. I think that's more than enough. Nice. Ito, complete, uh, complete the sentence. Uh, money is the root of all blank. So for you, what should be the whole sentence about it? Money is the root of all blank. I know people say won't say money is the root of all happiness, but I do believe money is very. <laughs> Why um, not? That's for you, Oho. <laughs> and for so, me, money is very important because without money, you won't be able to have comfort. You won't be able to buy time. Uh, you won't be able to spend time with your family and your friends and the most important people in your life. Nice. So that's our fast talk. Now we go to the golden nuggets of Edmund D. This is. Manifest are the three essential tips. So Edmond, what will you impart to our audience today for them to have the kind of, you know, if they want something to start uh, from like a business or, uh, you know, they want to achieve something in life, can you give them like your three essential tips or your how they will manifest? I think number one is that you have to look at stuff from a bigger picture perspective. And I think that's, from when I talk about bigger picture, it's not just um, in terms of what your ideals are, but it's also in terms of long term. Uh, two is don't fall in love with everything that comes your way, right? I think what's key also for anybody is find out what's important to you as a person. Things come and go, but the things and experiences that you cherish will last for a lifetime. Okay, and number three, as Chinese, multiplica. So I think the <laughs> most important thing is to spend below your means. Sometimes people have different expectations with what they think is valuable to them. But for me, especially, I mean, find out the things that are valuable, not just in terms of material, but in terms of something that can bring you until you die. Thank you so much, Edmund. That is very, you know, insightful. I really, I really enjoyed our, our talk. And there are a lot of things that I found out just now that I didn't know before. I That's hope great we can hear. See Hopefully everyone. I made, some, made sense in today's discussion. <laughs> of course, of course. Hindi mo ba naisip mag-artista ever? Pwede ba? Hindi ako kapasitin, matandaan na ako. Kinapture ko lang yung kinapture ko lang yung reaction niya kasi he hates do me doing that to him. All right, thank you so much, Edmond. All right, okay, China, thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. The vision of expenses or multiplication of income in one word described, Caleb, and that is the things that you know we've found out uh, with our guest today, CEO Edmond Lee. Akakatuwang isipin na. You know, uh, there is such a pride when it comes to starting from scratch and being the first generation. But it's it's so nice to know that tama yung sinabi ni Edmo na there is a risk involved if you make a mistake if, when it comes to the second generation. And I've never thought of it that way until he mentioned it to, to us uh, this afternoon. And it's really insightful and, you know, alam na natin kung ano yung pressure naman that uh, that is on, going on to you know the ones in the in the second generation ayan so are you ready for this week's trending stock anong kumpanya ba ang magandang bilhin ngayon sa Philippine stock market this is fearless forecast all right so our guest trader today it is a certified expert in finance and investing. Actually, he was our big time guest too. Be before becoming the CEO of Dragonfly Securities, the newest and claimed to be the most advanced online trading platform in the Philippines today, he started out with a cosmetic business. So, alam yun na, kilala yun na to, isa pang opa to. Welcome back to Follow the Money, Mr. John Lim. <laughs> Hi, John. Oh, hello. Actually, we're not claiming, we're not claiming it's a fact it's a fact that it's the most advanced trading platform in the country i like that so in, in terms of yeah in terms yeah. of like of of that tingnan natin ngayon what is your fearless forecast john 
Your year's forecast in terms of a stock? Yeah, going towards the end of the year since pa patapos na ang ating and then what will are what are we going to look forward to and probably early next year. Actually, during I think in, during the my guesting in the in 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 the big time a couple of weeks ago, right? I I, I mentioned ICT as my my topic. I think I, I'll still go with ICT, but. As far as you know, for the rest of the year, I feel that we're in a holding pattern. Uh, so, so much is made about seasonality during the November December period, right? But uh, in the past 20, 21 years that I've been trading, I mean, actually, twenty three years that I've been trading, uh, typically um, it's only in markets that are in a bull market that experience seasonality. Um, in, in markets that really actually underperform, such as what we have in the PSEI, what happens is that prices are just buoyant in in the sense that they don't go down. So that's what we're going to experience uh, for the remainder for the remainder of the year. Okay, so you mentioned previously in the and uh, and when you guessed it in the big time uh, segment that you like ICTSI and now you are still uh, saying that ICTSI is your favorite stock. Um, can you elaborate more on why? Is it because of the industry? Uh, is it because of like what particular thing that you like about the stock? It's really the growth profile of the stock. I think the, the margins are through the roof. Uh, I don't have the data handy right now. I think that it's a bit the margin is in the high 60s. Uh, outside of that, the yield, the dividend yield is actually pretty good and it's still growing. Uh, over the past 15 years, I think uh, ICT was able to increase its dividends uh, by a CAGR of in the high in the high key. I think it's almost close to 20% per, per annum. So ICT for me is, is really it's it's really the no brainer stock in the in the PSC. Okay, and how what do you think, John? Uh, our performance. Uh, bakit may mga stocks na na EE one? Uh, like you mentioned to me the other day, na may mga stock pa rin na na EE one versus S and P five hundred uh five hundred sector. Can you tell us more about that? Actually, it's not just specific stocks. It, in general, it's the entire market. Like um, so it's I, I think it's very insightful to look at what happened this year in 2020 to the PSPI, uh, to gain some insights into what potentially can can happen in 2024. So I, I believe you're now projecting one of the slides that I, I, I sent you. So I actually presented this slide uh in, in ANC Market Edge in uh the middle of October. So the data may be a little bit dated, but it's as insightful. As back then. So if you notice here, what I did was I assigned the individual uh, constituents of the PSEI to their uh, appropriate uh, S&P 500 set. And what you would notice, what, what's, what's clearly apparent, is that we are underrepresented in the two sectors that actually carry the S&P 500 in communication services and information technology. And we are overrepresented in sectors that underperform. So this and plus uh if you, if you if you could go to the next slide so i used the same data set and presented it in a different way uh in this case i derived the earnings per share of the entire index and assigned them to the appropriate uh sector again it's the same story same story here you'll see that again uh we're over indexed to the sectors that are deemed uh disadvantaged by the current macroeconomic backdrop so, so, have, uh, so knowing this, what does this imply about 2024, right? So, the way the, the way the way to tackle this is to actually have uh, a mental map of uh, the potential outcomes. So, so what does this imply for 2024? The way the, the way an investor should approach this is to map out uh, potential outcomes uh, from a macroeconomic perspective. So one one that's gaining a lot of credence is for the U.S. to actually uh, decelerate 
but skirt a recession. So avoid a recession, uh, growing at a 2% clip. So uh, that's fast enough. That's fast enough uh, to uh, support asset prices and weak enough to continue the disinflationary trend. But uh, in, in this outcome, in this outcome, the, the Fed will be forced to hold rates uh, uh, to be to be more restrictive uh, longer for longer, and potentially they, they might cut rates at, at the back end of 2024 or probably even early 2025. In that scenario, you still have that bi bifurcated uh, situation wherein uh, asset asset classes that are reliant on the cost of capital perform uh, underperform versus those that are not reliant on the cost of capital. So uh, another scenario would be that um, we have a more pronounced decline uh, in uh, U.S. economic activity, uh, whereby the, the U.S. actually falls into a recession, forcing the Fed to, to cut rates. Uh, so earlier, so in this scenario, let's let's say, let's peg it uh, mid-2024. If the Fed were to cut in June or July next year, uh, then that actually fulfills the uh, late stage cycle that people have been predicting wherein again the u.s falls into a recession uh causing you know uh, uh in increasing uh unemployment in the u.s which would, would then in initially impact asset prices but as the cost of capital is lowered uh the market then uh then discounts the potential recovery where wherein then you can implement an early cycle playbook in, in this case uh, you want to you want to be leveraged to uh, the more cyclical and, and small cap stocks, and that's when I think the broadening out will, will occur, and that's really very positive for for the PSEI. John, when it comes to our newbies, uh, can you uh, give like a simple explanation why we are so dependent or bakit relative tayo masyado in Fed uh, Fed rate hikes? uh when it comes to performance in the market sure so so uh this is the first time that we uh, as 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 you know this is the first time that we've been experienced hyperinflation since the 1980s so it's been 40 40 years right so uh over the past decade from 2009 after the great financial recession to uh i think around 2021 uh interest rates were near zero or actually even negative so at that point, at that point in time, so um, you would favor, you know, it. But it was really very conducive for risky assets, right? But when the cost of capital increases, so the discount rate increases, that actually uh, impacts uh, negatively the the multiple of let's say uh, stocks and the the actually overall valuation of risky assets. Is is that simple enough? Yeah, I see. I see. So, uh, just for our because our viewers are like since the episode one, I think na entice natin sila to you know be part of uh, the growing uh, literate financially literate people here in the Philippines. So yeah, meron po tayong close relativity when it comes to Fed rate hikes and also yep. the performance of our. Uh, sabi nga ni John, there's an hyperinflation. Uh, so yep. ngayon, John. Um, thank you for that. Let's let's gonna see in the coming uh, months about uh, your prediction. But I want to show you something. Uh, we believe here and follow the money that you can learn from a meme. Now, oh. do you, uh, I will show you a meme and tell me if this meme uh, is relatable to you. <laughs> so the buy meme high. is this: buy high, sell low; buy low, buy sell low, high. Yes. So, yeah, de definitely. So, and and any investor that has not experienced buying high and selling low is lying, right? So, we, <laughs> we've all experienced that, right? so buy low, sell high. You know that that's really the the ideal scenario. But I'd like to give some context, though. So, if you look at what's happening, let's say in, in the U.S., right? It's it's been um it's been momentum driven over the past, let's say, thirty years now. So it's actually in the U.S. What really works is buy high, sell higher. But in markets such as the Philippines, in, in uh, it's where liquidity is an issue. It's actually 
you really actually want to implement a more value-based strategy that's thereby using buy, the buy low sell high strategy ang galing kasi usually di ba when when this meme is being shown ang iniisip yeah. agad ng tao cut loss lahat ng nabibili by, by so it, it it's an argument but it was a good thing that you mentioned na, yeah in the US also there's shorting which is upcoming na sa Pilipinas and um also na you know there are a lot there are there are a lot of young stocks right now na nandun pa sa mababang stage nan pa emerge pa lang yung business and uh sure. but you know John what do you think is the golden nugget why was this created why was this meme created what do, what do you think is the moral behind this meme and how will we are we going to learn from it this meme you can relate very well to an investing adage right wherein uh you should be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy so that's how I see the Philippine market, right? So for me, like at current valuation, the Philippine market is really a coiled thing. It's uh it's just it's just a matter of time before before you know that uh I think you know asset prices really uh reflect the improving fundamentals. Thank you so much, John. And uh yeah, the tutu that you came back to us uh, with this naman that ano ka eh, talagang kahit sa angle basta when it comes to finance maaasahan ka namin thank you so much and we we'll hope all to right. see you next thank you thank you Gina Jack of all trades master of none dati parang napakapangit nito pakinggan pero pinatunayan ng mga panauhin natin ngayon na success happens when you know how to multiply your talent your resources, and most especially, your time. Hindi na tayo master of one job lang. We are now the jack of many different ways to earn money. Actually, meron din to sa Bible that I, I, I saw this uh, content creator saying that uh, it was written there na at least three income streams dapat meron ng isang tao. Di ba? nakaka -intrigue. Kung nahirapan ka mag-budget, panahon na para magdagdag ka ng pwedeng pagkakitaan. At hindi lang natatapos ito sa kung ano yung meron ka. Sometimes, our situation teach us how to multiply the talents that was given to us. I am Chena Barachina. Follow me, follow your dreams, and the money will follow right after. Thank you and God bless you, Rich Snakers. See you the next with the next episode. <laughs>